We're throwing bones and claiming thrones. That's right, it's Dice Thrones Season 2 from Roxley Games. This dice and card combat game pits two to six fighters against one another in a cutthroat competition to win the Mad King's Tournament of Champions. Players roll unique dice and play cards from their hero's action deck in a round for round hit fest where dropping to zero health points means you're out of the game. Setup begins with each player choosing a hero. Take out that hero's tray and set up the hero board with your character's name, eight abilities including offensive, passive, and defensive, one ultimate ability, and sick art. Hero leaflet and tokens with setup info and frequently asked questions on one side, and status effects and companions on the other. Set the tokens on their correct spots on the supply stacks. Health dial turn to 50, combat points dial set to 2, Action deck, shuffled, and dice. If your hero requires any special setup rules, as noted on the back of the hero leaflet, follow those steps as well. Today we're setting up for a two-player game. Some slight rules variations can help you set up for a free-for-all game with three to six players, or a team game. Check the rulebook for those details. Each player now draws four cards from their deck to form a starting hand, then rolls a die to see who goes first. Gameplay occurs in turns, during which the active player proceeds through a number of phases. Let's go through them one at a time. First, in the upkeep phase, any abilities or conditions that occur at the start of a turn resolve now. If there are multiple effects, the active player may choose the order in which they resolve. Next, in the income phase, the active player gains one combat point and draws one card from their deck. In the first turn of the game, the starting player skips the income phase. Then it's time for the main phase, where the active player can take actions in any order, including play main phase action cards by spending the combat points or CP cost shown on the left, after which they may perform that action. Played action cards then go to that player's discard pile. Or play hero upgrade cards by paying the CP cost and upgrading an ability listed on their hero board. Some upgrades have levels. If upgrading from a previous level, the player only has to pay the CP difference in cost. Or sell a card by discarding a card from their hand and increasing their CP by one point. Any of these actions can be taken multiple times, after which the player is ready to roll. In the offensive roll phase, the active player now takes their dice and performs up to three dice rolls. When rolling, the player may choose to keep any dice rolled and set them aside, then choose if they want to roll again. During this time, any player can play roll phase action cards to alter the rolls or activate effects in the game. Once the active player has decided to keep their role, they may then use those dice to activate one of their offensive abilities on their hero board. The cost of an ability on the top means the active player must roll that combination of dice in order to activate that power. For instance, take the Gunslinger's Take Cover ability. It requires a roll of two bullets and three dashes. Or the Fan the Hammer ability, which requires a large straight, essentially five numbers in a sequential row. Once the ability is declared, players may still play a roll phase action card to alter the roll. If so, the active player can announce a new ability based on those results or use any of their remaining rerolls at this time. If the ability grants any tokens, CP, or health points, the active player gains them at the end of this step. Many of these abilities use the tokens from a player's hero leaflet to provide benefits or hinder opponents. If the ability deals damage, play proceeds to the defensive roll phase. In a game with three or more players, there's also a targeting roll phase to decide who gets the damage. Check the rulebook for an easy breakdown of how that works. For the defensive roll phase, the player's opponent first takes any tokens or effects listed on the offensive ability. Then, they may activate any one defensive ability by rolling the indicated number of dice. 
Either player may play a status effect or roll phase action card, after which the damage and any prevention from the defensive ability are resolved. If the player took damage, they lower their health points. If anyone hits zero health, they're out of the game. Next, a second main phase occurs, where the active player can sell or play cards. Just like in the first main phase, this step is an opportunity for a player to resolve their plans after combat. Finally, in the discard phase, the active player must sell any cards in excess of six in their hand. They gain one CP for each card sold, which go in the discard pile. Players alternate turns in this order, Here's a few awesome things to keep in mind. Each player also has an ultimate ability in the lower center of their board. Once activated successfully, an ultimate ability's effects are unstoppable. The damage can be enhanced, but not prevented, avoided, or responded to in any way. The only way to prevent it is to alter the die roll before the ability is activated. Status effects are unique to each hero. Positive effects can be gained, while negative effects can be inflicted. Either way, once activated, take a token from the leaflet and add it to the targeted hero's board. Note that many status effects have a stack limit, meaning that's the max number of tokens of that type that can be on a single hero board at any time. Hero cards include several types. Hero upgrade cards for increasing abilities, main phase action cards to be played in either main phase, roll phase action cards to alter or affect roles, and instant action cards which can be played at any time to interrupt other actions or abilities and cannot be interrupted themselves. Play continues back and forth until only one player or team remains, and they win the game! And that's Dice Throne Season 2. I'm Becca Scott, and I respect and appreciate civic responsibilities such as jury duty. No one should try and get out of it. Your judicial system needs you. Your country needs you. You can watch me and my friends play this game and other amazing games on Game the Game, right here on Geek and Sundry. We'll see you there.